Hey guys, so we are now going to get into ball valves. Um, these are these are our sprinkler guy favorite, aren't they? We all love our ball valves. Um, gonna get right into it. So some of the pros, we all know that they are indicating uh, the handle. If it is parallel to the installation of the body, the, the pipe coming out of the body, then it is in the open position. When the handle is perpendicular to the pipe going into the body, so we've got a 90 degree here, we know that it's actually shut, right? So we see it's shut. A stainless steel ball closer. Just like that. Um, they're great because they're a small profile. If uh, if I ever want to install them, they're kind of nice. And by small profile, I mean, uh, like we always try to get these into trim and stuff like that. You just got to take that nut off. You can pull the handle off and all, all I'm left with is this slim body. So it kind of makes it very easy to install. Whereas, you know, this is a, a one inch globe valve, composition disc globe valve. And if I want to spin this around, well, now I got to take into account the clearance of the handle. Sometimes, you know, just the handle's enough, but now the stem's in the way. You could actually take the entire body, the bonnet right off and just be left with the body, but now you're kind of tampering with the valve. Well, you know, whereas, you know, the valve bodies are very similar in size. In fact, the ball valve is actually even ever so slightly smaller. So that's just kind of what I mean. They're, they're, they're a small profile. They're kind of, they make it very easy for us to install. Sorry. Um, another good thing about them is hydraulics. It's very easy to tell. Like, that's it. That is a full bore wide opening right there so we don't get any friction well i don't want to say any but very minimal friction loss uh for ball valves right um orientation i put that in blue uh only because uh this kind of falls under the same category as uh the invitation to the coat hanger uh the accidental actuation so you know i'm going to kind of hit up a few of these as to for orientation because this one actually kind of this one uh tackles a few different fields here so when we're installing them depending on where we are installing them uh we want to choose there, there, there's actually no arrow for this kind of one that it doesn't matter which side you want on the supply side or discharge side however i will say if you are going to install a ball valve and you know the downstream side is going to not have pressure on it say for example you want to install a ball valve as an inspector's pest connection i do highly recommend that you try to keep the seam there is typically a seam on the on the ball valve and for this one it's right here so i would actually want to keep the pressure side on the side without the seam on the body because now i've eliminated any chance of a leak happening every now and again this act this seam actually does leak and uh it, it does happen so if i were to install the pressure side on the seam i've now just created a chance you know it might be minimal but there is a chance it could leak here so I do try where possible to install these so that the solid brass part of the body is on the, the system side. And if there's just atmosphere on this side, just put the seam on that side. Uh, the next thing that we talk about in terms of orientation is which way is the handle going to go? Which way is the handle normally and which way do I want it to operate? Because these are so prone for accidental actuation. If this were my inspector's test valve and I were to install it this way, well, we know this valve needs to be normally closed. Now, I don't want my buddy over here, buddy Jim in this warehouse, to go hang his coat on here, grabs it at the end of the day, and he just pulls it down. Now water is rushing through and outside, and they've just caused a fire alarm, right? So that's kind of another thing for orientation. We kind of want to keep that in mind. You know, for, and for this application, for this valve, the way it's installed, for an inspector's test valve, this would be perfect for me. Because opening it does not open down. Gravity is not going to help assist open it. So in order to open it, someone's got to physically push it up to open it. And 99.999% of the time, it is closed like this. So when I do install these uh, up against the wall, I'm typically like, you know, two and a half, three inches center off of a block wall or whatever, I actually don't like to install the handle exposed like this. I actually do try my best to kind of get the handle close to the wall. I know some inspectors don't like it because now it's kind of like your fingertips are in there and you kind of got to gently open it like that. Uh, but when when that handle is kind of tucked away out of sight out of mind the odds of someone kind of walking by and snagging it or you know hanging their coat on it has just decreased dramatically than when you kind of put it like that so just kind of you know you you pick the way that you think is best but i always just try to think about uh hey, i just don't want leaks i don't want people to accidentally damage it i don't want people to accidentally open and close it it's, it's a dangerous valve right we don't usually plug off the uh the inspector's test outside so that being said, also alarm test valves, normally closed. We do usually see them on there for that. Same thing, uh, same idea. Now on alarm test, uh, 
again, the pressure side from the water supply side of your alarm valve, I would try to keep it onto the, uh, onto the, uh, the solid brass part of the body. I do know reliable, the alarm test is typically, uh, it's vertical. They do install ball valves. Now I actually know they come as a, as a, a trim kit and I'm guessing the guys who assemble them, I've seen them come both ways where they open down or they open up right from the manufacturer. So a little bit of quality control there. Um, but same thing, an alarm test valve, I would typically, even though the, so in this application, the alarm test, the water supply comes in from the bottom, and then this would co go into my alarm line piping. Uh, I know that the seam is off the bottom. However, if I had my choice, I would still always prefer for a vertically installed valve, I, uh, ball valve, I prefer the valve handle to open upwards to open it. And that's just because people like to hang stuff on them. It, it's such a common thing. So um, you know, it's up to you. You make that call. You're going to be the one installing it. So you decide what's best, right? Um, and that kind of goes in for orientation. You can install them horizontally. It, you can put them on diagonals. It'd be really weird if I saw a ball valve on a diagonal. I wouldn't know what you're doing with it, but you could, if you wanted to, that makes no difference. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, orientation does not matter. Oh, uh, I, I, yes, I remember to bring this. Uh, this is called a bleeder valve. This is very common, uh, common installation for, um, uh, they, they're for sure approved for dry systems. If you actually look, I've actually seen these installed on wets as well. However, this came from Potter and it says right here, caution for use with compressed air only. So I've seen these installed on wets. I, I'm not gonna lie. I've personally installed them on wets and we typically install them on the, uh, the low pressure switch. So on the supply side of a PS 120 or a PS 40. And it's basically a, a vent valve. So it's got to stay normally open. And while it's normally open, no big deal. Uh, but if you see, there's a little vent hole here. So if you look, if you also continue to read it, it just says this is a one-way directional valve and must be installed as indicated by the flow arrow on the handle. So here's a the handle. There's an arrow pointing up. So basically, when you close this valve, oh, what's going on here? When I close it, that hole is now actually going to discharge any pressure on this side. So I can just prove it to you while it's closed. You can hear the air blowing out of that little vent hole. But if I blow on this side, nothing. So basically, which, when you install these on low pressure switches, if you're going to put it on a wet system, you basically just quickly shut it. It's going to bleed any pressure downstream of it. Uh, put your hand behind it if it's on a wet, because whatever is going to be behind it is gonna, about to get wet. So just kind of block that water. But it's, you put it on a low pressure switch because now you're going to drop the pressure on the supply side of that switch right down to zero. So now you're going to activate a uh, supervisory signal um, for that low pressure switch, whether it's PS120, PS, uh, PS40, what have you. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these. Uh, I've mentioned this in other videos, but I don't like them just for the sake that uh, it promotes bad habits for uh, inspectors. Um, it's an all or nothing valve. So you're going to have whatever, 100 PSI on the system side, on supply, on discharge side of this valve. You shut it and it that pressure drops right down to zero. So you're either getting all pressure or nothing. And there's no in between. So what inspectors will do is they'll see these bleeder valves and they're just uh, they're just greasing it up. And they're like, oh yeah. And they close it and like, yep, your low pressure worked. Well, your low pressure is there for a reason. It's there as a supervisory. So there's a warning to tell you that your system is getting low on pressure and then the next signal you're going to get is a flow alarm. So the purpose of an inspection is to actually check that switch. I want to know when that low pressure comes in because if that low pressure comes in below my water supply pressure, well, you, it's a useless switch. What, what's the point of that? So I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's kind of one of the reasons I don't really like these valves. So I do still install them. They, they do have their advantages in that sense. But uh, when I do my inspections, I don't, I don't use them for just for testing the switch. I actually do bleed the system down. I want to know that when that low pressure signal comes in. Uh, this one's also good. Some ball valves do have this, but see this little metal part right here, how it kind of can push into the body and it can actually lock it. So you can put a padlock in here or you can put a, a seal in there, zip seal or whatever. And I cannot tamper with that valve. So that's kind of nice that this one has this. Um, so this one's good. It kind of fall, this one actually falls into methods of supervision. So as per NFPA 25, uh, as long as a valve can be locked, sealed, uh, and or electronically supervised in its normal position, that is acceptable. So electronically supervised would be any electronic supervision, um, you know, PTSC, P, uh, OSNYSU-2, um, 
P, uh, PCBS switch, all those switches that go on control valves that basically are electronically supervising that valve and let you know if you're, if you're opening or closing it. Uh, for a ball valve, uh, Potter does make one. It's called an RBVS. Uh, I've, I've probably only installed one like once or twice in my life. They're not very common. You don't usually see them very often, but uh, you will see them for sure if you're working in like airplane hangers and there's foam systems, like if they got these going into like isolation valves for a foam tank or something like that. And for sure, you want to be monitoring those foam tanks, right? You don't want to forget a valve shut on that and then uh, your airplane hanger goes up in, in jet fuel. So um, yeah, there are methods of supervision locks as i just said there's a means of locking it uh seals now i've tried to kind of looking this up i don't really know the exact definition of a seal uh the company i work for we just basically use like red zip ties that go through it and i guess that kind of counts it's sealed as long as you kind of zip tie it it kind of tampers someone uh you know or you know it's it's proving that you've sealed it in that position so if someone breaks your zip tie uh but then again you know like and i've had arguments with people like well if someone's smart and like, you know, something happens and they, they want to go back and talk to the company and be like, oh, you know, you guys left that valve closed or you left it open. We come back and say, no, 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 we sealed them all. Well, if they're smart, they might just rip all the seals off, throw them in the garbage and say, you guys didn't seal anything. And who's to prove whether or not we installed that zip tie or not. So I'm kind of on the fence with the whole zip tie thing, whether or not I like it or not, but it's better than nothing. We'll put it that way. So that's that. Um, reliability they they are very reliable valves i will say that just from my own personal experience i don't usually have too many issues with ball valves they're, they're actually uh they're usually pretty good if I, if I were to definitely uh tell you which ones i have more issues with whether it's a ball valve or like a globe valve on like an inspector's pest valve or whatever i certainly have much more issues with a globe valve mostly just because it, like rocks and debris or whatever that rubber kind of the rubber on the uh the on the disc there kind of wears and tears over time whereas these ones have a teflon seat and a stainless steel ball and uh it's very rare but it does happen they do fail over time it, it, and you know you got to figure that out figure out which one's passing and you fix it fix it accordingly um so that's reliability system flushing uh i've done quite a bit of flushing in my career and ball valves are my choice uh you want to be able to go from zero to 100 when you are flushing branch lines, flushing whatever. You want that water hammer, that, that sudden surge, that high velocity in water. Uh, when you hook up to, to all of your branch lines, and it, I've done a lot of it on, on, it's typically on dry systems. That ones are the most prone to uh, getting nick and corrosion and all that stuff and all that old rust and scale. And uh, I have noticed, so when I do my flushing, I will just whip that ball valve open. It's on the tail of my, on my add cap or whatever. And you can literally just hear all that sediment just, just crackling away and then let it flow for 30 seconds and that crackling kind of stops. And then I shut the valve, give it a few seconds, kind of let the system equalize again, and then just whip her open again. And then again, you'll hear that crackle after two seconds after opening it, your pose is kind of flailing around as it, you know, you're up on a lift or up on a boom, but open it just a couple seconds later, you hear that crackle come again. So I'll, I'll just keep repeating that process back and forth a few times, you know, spend five, six, seven minutes on that one branch line and until you kind of hear that crackling come to a stop and, uh, and then you're good to go. You move on to the next one, right? Um, word of the wise, if you were going to install these uh, ball valves as a flushing connection on a dry system and it is winter, it's cold, sub-zero outside. Um, for the states, what is that? Uh, sub minus 32 Fahrenheit, or sorry, positive 32, 32. Two times one, 28 plus 32. Yeah, 32 Fahrenheit would be freezing for you guys. Um, you need to be careful with this when you're flushing because you, when you flush, you typically uh, code wants you to fill up your system piping with water, let it sit for about a for about a day, just kind of loosen up all that scale. Um, don't do flushing in winter. That's kind of the real thing to it. But uh, I will tell you why. I'll tell you a story afterwards once I'm done with what happened. Um, let's keep moving on. Talked about methods of supervision. Uh, difficult to throttle. So this is just a 90 degree uh, change in state. So I'm just going to use, let's pretend it's 100 degrees instead of 90, but basically every 10 degrees is 10% closure. You know what I mean? So it's not really, it's not really that, but you know what I mean? Close enough. I'm not going to get into the like 9.6, whatever, whatever the hell it is. So they are a little bit more difficult to throttle than say like a globe valve. A globe valve, you can kind of fine tune a little bit. You got that, that gentle handle. You can kind of get that slight change in pressure if you kind of want to get a little bit more accurate with downstream residual pressures, right? Um... 
Did I get into all of that? I did talk about accidental stuff like that, coat hangers, service. You really can't do much to service them. Oh, you know what? I, would, I took one of these apart. I want to show you guys what they look like. So there's that seam I was talking about, right? So I'm just gonna, let me see, make sure you guys can see. I'm gonna take that seam right off. Uh, on this side, you can just see there's a Teflon seat right there. That's what that ball kind of, the stainless steel ball right there. And it just rubs up smoothly against that Teflon seat, right? So that's just a stainless steel ball. I'm going to push it out. And as you can see, this is in the closed position. You can only install it while that handle's closed. And I'll tell you what, you can see, can you see? Uh, I don't know if you can. There is a notch right here in the stem. And there is a little notch right here in the top of this ball. So that notch needs to go in to the notch. Like you cannot get it in any other way. Like I, I physically can't get this ball in any other way. So it's very obvious once you, if you can see it. I don't think you can. Anyways, there's a Teflon seat on the other side. There's a stainless steel ball right here, and it's open like that, right? So it's closed. I'm going to put that notch in. Let me get that back in there. Oh, that's why I missed the notch. Hang on. Oh, there we go. So I got that in there, right? So as you can see, when it's closed, the other side of my body, that Teflon seat is going to be the mating surface of that stainless steel ball. You can't really tell, but I can actually see the other side of that ball valve open right there. You can actually just kind of see it. So while it's like this, that is still exposed. So if I were to kind of put water in this way, uh, or sorry, water in this way, it would just kind of work its way through that, that opening in the stainless steel ball. And that now leads into my whole dry system story that I'll quickly tell you as for why you need to be careful to install these on dry systems. So dry systems, NFPA 13, uh, 2013 edition. I don't think this has changed, but it says uh, only composition disc globe valves, which would be this, can be installed on dry systems air systems um and the reason for it is typically for like for uh for uh like drum drip or low point drain valve applications and that's just uh i'm gonna get into it later but that's just because water on a globe valve just comes in they're directional they come in on one side you can close it uh water and air sorry just basically stop right here on this side of the valve and now anything downstream of that seat you can see it anything downstream of that seat is going to be like your your uh your drum drip connection will be like into a nipple cap but that can all be drained right out the problem with these is like i just showed you with that stainless steel ball so there's now that's sitting against the housing wall it's shut so the reason that these are not good for dry systems uh at least if you're going to install them on a dry system install them on your drum drip as the upper valve the normally open one but on the lower one i would highly recommend you actually do stick to the composition disc globe valve and i'll tell you why so what happened was someone did a flush. This is actually, this isn't my story. This actually came from FM Global, uh, one of the guys there. So, and it makes perfect sense. What do you tell me? They were doing flushing. They finished, uh, so they hooked up ball valves to all of the, they took off, they took off all the branch line caps. It, it actually ended in caps and maybe like six inches from the cap was a sprinkler head. Um, they took off all the caps. They installed two by one out of caps or whatever. Two, or, or whatever, two by two out of caps, 90s, two inch ball, I don't know what size it was. They installed ball valves, basically. They took caps off, they put 90s, and they put in a ball valve. They filled up the system, they flushed it, they were done, but when they were done flushing, obviously they, they actually closed the valve, so it would be flowing water, and then, you know, flowing water, they're flushing, while water's still there, they close it. So, as they've closed it, after water's flushing, they've now trapped water inside that stainless steel ball so while it's closed as i just showed you the openings to that ball are on the left side and the right side body and they've trapped water inside the, the housing inside the very center of that valve now they were done flushing and you know what they actually decided it wasn't worth their time wasn't worth their money to go back after they're done flushing and take all the valves out so they actually just said oh let's just stick in one inch plugs at the bottom whatever and uh we're just going to abandon them up there. And, you know, maybe 10 years from now, if we got to flush again, no big deal. Just open them back up and they're already there. They're ready to go for it. So the the thought and the intention was good. They want to save money, save time. Money, arguable, because they kind of abandoned a whole bunch of brass up there. But they, they decided to leave them up there. Sure enough, winter came. And as I just said, because they were flushing, it was full of water when they were flushing. They've trapped that water in that stainless steel ball. 
Well, eventually that water needed to go somewhere once it froze. And it sure enough, it did freeze and multiple one inch ball valves all blew out on the sides. The ice had nowhere to go. So brass is the softest alloy the, the stainless steel ball ain't going to flex. So that, that brass, you can actually just see they blew out on all the sides. So I think they had maybe like, well, I don't know how many there were, but I remember the FM global guy did tell me, he said a whole bunch of ball valves just exploded on the sides and the system tripped and just created a huge disaster, just a big mess in this, this area that was uh, into sub uh, freezing temperatures. Right. So anyways, that's the story. So, if that now makes sense, the reason why I said uh, if you're going to install them, install them on the upper valve of your ball of your drum drip and for the bottom, maybe stick with that composition disc below above. However, by code, you're not supposed to install them. By code, it, it actually just says only composition disc globe valves. But, you know, it, I've seen it all the time and that, it is what it is. So if you are going to install them on both, just make sure when you close that bottom one, make sure there's no water left. It's got to make sure there's it's not so full of water you shot and you're like, ah, it's good enough. It'll be okay. Um, it's also not good if that drum drip is not heat traced. So at very minimum, if that valve's heat traced, at least it'll kind of keep it warm and stop it from freezing. But, uh, but yeah, so that's what I mean. So, if, you know, you got your, your, uh, your dry system main is sloped down this way. It's a four inch main and then whatever they slope down your alarm valves over here. I can't remember the sign. I think that's a pre-action, whatever. I can't remember. Anyways, if someone decides to put in a low point drain off the bottom, this is your, your cap right here. It's a symbol for a cap. They come off the bottom, they come over to a wall, they come down, here's my wall. Oh, I don't know if you can see it, there's my wall. They come down. If I were to put the ball valve anywhere, that's the valve it would be. Maybe I'll change colors, and they come down, ball valve, and they came into a cap like that. So if I were to go, if, like I said, if you're going to put a ball valve anywhere, I guess this is where it should be right up here. Because this one's always normally open. That one's got to be normally closed. All right. So you can play with them back and forth. And uh, depending how bad, how much volume of trapped water there is, you may want to extend that. I think it's a, uh, what is it? Two inch by 12 inch nipple minimum. Uh, that's actually, that's a code it's just says two by 12 or equivalent volume so it's not necessarily true you could actually go with inch and a half to calculate the volume of whatever two by 12 ends up being so you know you can install an inch and a half nipple if you wanted to it's just got to be longer than 12 inches so it's the equivalent and minimum standard more is better right the more volume you keep in there the better it is right um and then yeah just make sure you tell the uh the contractor whoever it is just say you know if you know it's going to be prone to getting a, a fair amount of water in there like it's off the main and you've really trapped the shit out of it uh, just ask them to heat trace that. Make sure that that bottom valve is is certainly heat trace. And the higher up the heat trace they go, the better. Heat trace and insulation. The more they do, the more water you're allowed to kind of accumulate. Not that I'm saying there should be too much. Whoever's there doing maintenance should be keeping an eye on that. But that's that. I don't I don't want to get too much into code and dry systems and all other stuff. The whole point of this was for valves. So that's that for that's that for ball valves. And we'll move on.